the who. And then I, I put Talbot in my own case uh, for many pages. Supreme Court, 1795. You hear me talk about it all the time, but I sent you the link to Talbot here. Um, I had sent it to you twice before, but whatever reason. Um, this is included with the caption, a caption of it from, not the caption, I did it multiple times in my paperwork, different, different quotes from it, different places, but here's a caption of it in my paperwork um, where we are admonished by the Supreme Court of the United States of the American Empire in Talbot, 1795. We are told if a man has a right to expatriate, which means leave, and another nation has a right and disposition to adopt him. It is a compact, which is another word for contract, between the two parties. Incidentally, all law, especially all international law, must be interpreted as man on man. That's another rule most people aren't aware of. Yes, it might say states and states. It might say country and country. It might say tomato and tomato. But it must always be understood to be man on man. Yeah. It's another smoke and mirrors. They say s state versus state. So that people think it doesn't apply to them. All that only applies to world leaders. Yeah, but it's world leaders who treat themselves as two men. They're pretending to be men. Pretending because states are not men, obviously. But as all law must be interpreted as man on man, it doesn't matter if it says person or tomato. Uh, it is a compact between the two parties consummated by the oath of allegiance. I will stop myself right there. Do you know what's wrong with that concept? Absolutely nothing. But <laughs> in point of execution, in point of execution, the genius of the American founders was that we set that up to be a tautology. A what? Tautology. Uh, who? You can't define a word as a, uh, using the word in its own definition? As a tautology is when you set one equal to two. You might have seen that in, in mathematic uh, games. Tell me you are not strange to that idea. Uh, Mother! How do you plan to win anything in court if you can't formulate good arguments? I don't know. You're damn right. You're damn right when the cop says there were two. I'm going to say two? Does that mean one? I object. I have no idea what this man is spouting off about. Everyone knows one equals two. I'll show you that in a minute. But getting back to our story, and then we'll circle back to the allegiance question. A man's last will, a man's last will, like will and testament, mm. as to his citizenship, citizenship means member of a family, may be likened to his last will, meaning last will and testament. As to his estate. It supersedes every former disposition. What does that mean? That means when you quit being a member of the family. No one can say but yesterday you wanted to be a member of the family. This is your last act. It, it supersedes every former act. So what that. Let me put that in context for a minute. Today I wake up and I say, oh, I'm proud to be an Umian. I don't even know what a fucking Umian is. Is that like a leprechaun? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> a little fucking green man. Um, so you wake up and you say, I'm proud to be an Umian and a Christian. God save Uma. But then tomorrow you wake up and you say, Ah, so, oh, fuck that. I want to be a Californian. Praying to be a Californian and a Christian. And then by noon, you say, ah, shit, they're hanging Californians. 
<laughs> Proud to be an Arizonan and a Christian. Damn. They're searching Arizonians. Uh, oh, oh, wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Proud to be a Michigander and a Christian. <laughs> the joke is, no one can say, wait a minute, we're searching omens and uh, you claim to be an omen. Is that omen or omen? Oh, anyway. Um, <laughs> why? Why can they not say that? Because the Supreme Court of the United States confirmed it supersedes every former disposition. And by the way, the First Amendment, not that it's important, preserves your right eternally to change religious status at any time you choose. That's how I can tell you I'm a Christian and I can tell him I'm a Catholic and I can tell the other guy I'm a fucking uh, imam. But wait a minute, imams are the towel heads and the other ones are the we like God people and some of those people like Jesus. You can't be all of them. Yeah, actually I can because the First Amendment confirms it. And I really can belong to Uma at one minute and Arizona at another minute and California at another minute. As long as I'm not doing this to defraud or cheat anyone because... The Supreme Court of the United States confirmed that's eternally my right because I have preserved to myself full faith and credit in, cons in contracts. And uh, the contracts may be held inviolate and belonging to a civil community is a compact, which means contract. And when either takes effect, the party, in one case, is naturally dead. In the other, he is civilly dead. So what does that mean in practice? That means when we read your last will and testament, you are physically not breathing. Uh -huh. But when you denounce your citizenship in favor of another citizenship, you are only killing the person, not the man. When we say physically dead, we mean the man died. When we say naturally dead, we mean the man died. When we say civilly dead, we mean the person died. But in both cases, in both cases, as a good Christian and a good Republican, yes, the Supreme Court of the United States of the American Empire did not have a problem saying the word Christian in their ruling. <laughs> As only in the last couple of years that we developed these great animosities towards that word. Uh -huh. As a good Christian and a good Republican, it must be presumed he rises to another, if not a better, life and country. It oh. may be done obscurely. Obscurely. Obscurely, and even after the emigrant is released from, uh, to what nation does he belong? He may have entered no other country, nor incurred any obligation, which means contract, to any other sovereign, not being a citizen of. Michigan. He okay. cannot be deemed a citizen of the United States. Shall he be called a, quote, citizen of the world? A okay. human balloon? Uh, detached and buoyant in the political atmosphere? Gave that wherever he passes and settled wherever he touches. But on the other hand, the act of swearing allegiance to another sovereign is unequivocal, conclusive, extinguishing at once the claims of the deserted and created the right of the adopted country. Talbot versus Jansen.
1795. Mm -hmm. And I go on. One of the few times I actually make a statement, because you notice most of the times I'm just quoting, like there. Yeah. This is one of the very most important times I make a true statement in my paperwork. I say here, and from the beginning, require proof pressed upon the record in open court that this man, I, am bound to the wrongdoers by contract of citizenship, featuring all eight points of lawful contract and entered upon voluntarily and featuring two parties, the Republic and the man, each with wedding signatures and seals and proof that said signatures were so placed voluntarily and featuring all four points of lawfully binding signature or mark and I further require live flesh and blood eyewitnesses to speak in open court to the truth of these several allegations even here and now I man declare I believe in all on my lifetime I've never witnessed any such instrument and state here and now upon the record I have never been a party to such an instrument and it is my full intention to f remain free by nature as from the day of my conception and birth I am not otherwise than free and independent and never have been so. Period. <laughs> That's how you fucking shut shit down. Let's go back to the beginning part here where it says uh, uh, it is a contract between two parties consummated by the oath of allegiance. Why is that tautological? Because the American Empire has always forbade citizenry oaths of allegiance. So it is absolutely impossible for you, in fact, to be a citizen of the American Empire under the doctrine of allegiance by oath. See, because back when these these Supreme Court writers wrote 1795, you see that's right after the birth of our country, so they fully understood the true dynamics of the interworkings of our complex intergovernmental design, and they fully understood at that point in history there was no such a thing as a United States citizen. It wouldn't be invented till the 14th Amendment. Um, in in this writing, these Supreme Court uh, justices fully understood that citizens were born in a state. So you had to be born in Arizona to be a citizen of Arizona. And by virtue of Arizona citizenship, you were extensively, or ostensively, I guess you'd say, a member of the American Empire, or nowadays we would call them a national. Oh. So it's impossible for you to be bound by an oath of allegiance that you cannot be required to take. So oh. that's why it's tautological. If the contra if the compact between you and your government is based on an oath of allegiance that you cannot be bound to take, then you cannot be by extension compacted to your government so what does that mean in, a, in in actuality you're only an american if you say you're an american <laughs> if you believe you are an american then you are an american as long as one person on earth believes he is an american then america has not died 